to this lecture on somatosensory or somatic tinnitus. I will tell you um, more about the diagnosis and treatment of this condition. So tinnitus is called somatosensory or somatic in case altered input from the somatosensory system of the cervical spine or the jaw area influences the tinnitus. Now, a few years ago, we did a study in around 250 patients in our clinic and 26% of them were diagnosed with somatic tinnitus. So approximately one out of four. Now, through the years, many criteria have been used to include patients with somatosensory uh, tinnitus in studies. And these criteria vary from simply coexisting symptoms um, of, for instance, jaw pain and tinnitus, to patients being able to change their tinnitus during a set of physical tests. Now, the first thing we agreed on during our consensus meeting with that team um, was that we were not defining somatic tinnitus as a completely separate type of tinnitus, but more as an influencing factor that can, that can be present alone or in combination with other influencing factors. Now, this modulation actually means that the tinnitus um, changes when a patient um, does this specific movement or when we as a therapist are pushing a certain um, myofascial trigger point. And this effect also disappears immediately when you leave that end position of the movement or when you uh, stop pushing the trigger point. And also changes in location of the tinnitus. So, for instance, um, one day the tinnitus is more present in the right ear, but then the following day it's more present in the left ear. Now, That's since we agreed on these criteria, I have been using them myself in the clinic and I presented them to colleagues at several occasions. But doing so, I also realized that it still requires a lot of expertise also on tinnitus in general to be able to identify those patients who have this real somatosensory influence on their tinnitus. And that is why uh, we further investigated the criteria to see if some criteria may be stronger than others and to try and make a smaller cluster of criteria that can uh, simplify the uh, somatic tinnitus diagnosis. We first used these data to investigate the diagnostic value of our 16 criteria separately. When that criterion is present, we are almost 11 times more likely to have a patient with somatic uh, influence on the tinnitus. With an accuracy of 82.2%, a sensitivity of 82.5% and a specificity of 79%. So we were quite happy with these uh, figures. When this muscle tension is absent or only present on occasions, we are only 61% sure about our diagnosis and we have to look a little bit further. Now that I've talked about diagnosis, I would like to continue with a short overview of treatment options for these patients. Um, quite a few of our somatic tinnitus patients actually got their tinnitus after um, a cervical manipulation that went wrong. So most patients will not be uh, that happy about um, having um, the, the really um, high velocity thrust techniques applied to their neck. The treatment will be a combina combination of jaw mobilizations, uh, jaw exercises, trigger point treatment, some counseling to decrease bruxism when it's present or other uh, oral parafunctions. And you can also see that after a follow-up period, we kind of lost our treatment effect on the TFI. Now, we now know that this is because our six-week treatment program we used in that study was actually too short to have a long-term effect on the neck complaints. Now, also Cote and colleagues investigated a similar program and they found it was effective in decreasing the tinnitus severity. Uh, this study showed a very nice result in a very specific group of patients with unilateral um, somatic tinnitus. Now, this concludes my presentation of today.